we have a bar of mass m which is lying on a rough surface with let's say friction coefficient mu the mass is tied with a spring with a spring co coefficient k now the bar is displaced so that the spring was stretched by x naught and then it is released we need to find the period of oscillation and total number of oscillation until it stops completely so very interesting problem so we have this mass that is stretched and then released and the surface is rough so you can see when it's going towards left then friction will act towards right and let's say this comes here and then reaches the extreme and it stops and then it goes back towards right then the friction will act towards left so after every half cycle friction will change direction so this is different than how we are dealing with these kind of problems till now where the force was where the constant force was not changing direction here the magnitude is constant the frictional force magnitude is constant but its direction changes every half cycle so you can imagine the energy will be lost due to the friction and it will perform a smaller and smaller shms until it stops so in first part he is asking the period of oscillation in second part total number of oscillation until it stops completely so let's start with two basic things one is a constant force changes mean position but it does not affect the time period of shm so that we have seen many times in a case of a mass hanging so we have a constant force mg that is acting on this mass but still the time period of this mass comes to be 2 pi root m by k so that is independent of the constant force hence when it's going towards left there is a constant force but since it's constant the time period of that half will be pi root m by k so the total time period of to and fro is 2 pi root m by k and half time period will be pi root m by k with some constant force f it doesn't matter time period will be same while returning also the time period will be same pi root m by k so that means when it goes and completes one cycle so of course it won't reach to its original position but wherever it reaches and stops the time taken will be just adding these two and that will be just like your standard shm time period that is 2 pi root m by k just like this now this is just the answer of the first part now second part is quite interesting so again let's understand one thing first that if shm starts from one extreme so let's say there is a constant force so we pull this block down and then release it so there's a constant force mg and let's say the new mean because of this uh, this mass mg so this new mean will be where mg is equal to kx not so we pull it a little bit down so once the shm starts right from one extreme it's definitely going to reach the other extreme that is constant resistive force in this case mg won't be able to stop it earlier so if this is the mean position when you are when you have pulled this block here and you release it about this mean position it's definitely going to reach the top of it it's not going to stop in between just because mg is acting downwards if it starts it will reach to the top so same concept we are going to use here so here the mean position was given by mg is equal to kx not here the constant force is f so f is equal to k times t so instead of x not let's say the mean position is at t so the mean the mean position is given when this constant force is equal to the spring force so spring force will be kt so mean position will be at f by k and f is mu mg so mean position will be at mu mg by k from the neutral position of spring and the block will start only if kx is greater than f so this is the constant force this is the spring force 
So if the block is at rest, it will only start if the extension in the spring is causing sufficient force to overcome frictional force. Now F is equal to KT, so X must be greater than T. So it's okay if you don't understand some of these things, when we'll see the diagram in the next page, these things will become more clear. The concept anyway is this, if uh, you pull a block and if you release it, if it starts, then even though that constant force is there, it's going to complete its, not the cycle, at least it will complete its half cycle. So let's see the diagram now. So it looks very complicated, but don't worry about it. <laughs> You'll understand everything. So in this figure, let's say this is the initial portion and this, uh, this is the valve, this is the spring, and this is the, we have stretched it by X naught, which is given in the problem. So in the problem, it is given that initially the spring is stretched by X naught. So initially the block is here and then it is released. So obviously when it's going towards left, the constant force will be towards right, that frictional force. And we have already seen that, that because of that frictional force, mean position will shift by T amount. So this line represents the natural length of the spring. When it is, when the block is towards right and it's coming towards left, the frictional force is towards right. So that will shift the mean position towards right. And how much it will shift? It will shift such that that frictional force F is equal to KT. That's what we have done here. So F is equal to KT. And when we put the value of F, we got the value of T. So the when the block is sliding towards left, the mean position is here at Q. So Q is the mean position when block moves towards left. So let's, so about this mean position, it will complete its cycle. That's what we have explained here. If SHM starts, it will always reach the other extreme. So about this mean position, it will reach the other extreme. So if this distance is X naught, from the mean position, this distance is X naught minus T. So about this mean position, it will reach the other end. So this distance will also be X naught minus T where the block will stop. Now the block is here. Now when the block will move towards right, frictional force will act towards left. So mean position will shift towards left. So this will be the new mean position. So P represents the mean position when block moves right. And again, the amount of shift is same because frictional force is same. So you can imagine what will happen after this. So after this, it will, about this mean position, it will go to equal distance. And then again, new position will, new mean position will be this and like that. Now this is what I call the dead zone. So if block stops here, it won't move again. Because if block stops here, somewhere inside, then Kx will be less than Kt. And Kt is frictional force. So frictional force will exceed the spring force, so the block will not move. So where the block stops, we have to see that if its distance is less than t, then the block will not move further. So initially the distance of the block was X naught. Once it goes there, then the distance of block from the center will be this distance. And this distance is X naught minus 2T. Because this is X naught minus T. And this is T. So this distance is X naught minus 2T. So whenever block shifts from one side to another side, its distance from the center reduces by 2t amount. So initially the block was at a distance x0. Then when it came here, the block is at a distance x0 minus 2t. Now when it, the block will go here again, its distance from O will become x0 minus 4t and so on. 
so it will keep reducing until it reaches inside this dead zone and then it will not move so let's read a bit from diagram it's clear that between any two consecutive stops block distance from o decreases 2d 2t further therefore when the stationary block is at the beginning so here then its distance from o is x not after first half cycle so when it goes from here to here its distance from o is x not minus 2t then after second half cycle when it goes back here its distance will be x not minus 4t and so on so after nth half cycle its distance from o will be x not minus 2nt and as discussed for half oscillations to continue this distance should be greater than t so x not minus 2nt should be greater than or equal to t so from here we get the value of n to be less than half x not by t minus 1 now values of x not and t are given in the problem so x not is 3 and t is mu mg by k so if you put the values here you are going to get the ratio of x not by t to be 15 so this gives n should be less than half of 15 minus 1 that is n should be less than equal to 7 so it will complete seven half cycles and then the block will stop All right